Hello, my name is Mark Godfrey of the Global Presales Operations Team, and today we're going to set up a dynamic time list to be used in our optimization models. First thing we need to do is create that list. We're going to configure the list with a top level item of all months and set it as a numbered list. Next, we'll add our items, children, to the parent. Then we're going to set up our properties. We're going to include four different properties. Display name, month, accumulate count, and count. We'll set the formats for the first two. Display name format is going to be set for text general and the month format is going to be set for time period to month. Now we'll add our formulas for our properties. Display name will have month or name month, period, current period start, plus accumulate count minus one. Accumulate count will be accumulate count false months, and count is going to be one. And now if we look back at our results, we can see that we've got our display name correct for January through December. Now we'll go and change our display name so we can see it correctly. And when we look back, we'll see our months correctly populated. Now the second step is to use this in the module so that we're able to convert real time to our dynamic time list. So we have our module set up, our input data that has the real time data. We'll be able to see that we've got our real time that's using the time scale of month. We're able to look at that data and see it's all loaded in. For the SKU store demand, first we'll need to change the applies to, including the same list we used before, but now instead of the real time, we're going to use our dynamic time list. And now to set our formula, we're going to just reference the real time list and then use a lookup to our new dynamic time list and the month property. and we're able to see that data populated. As you can see, we've got January through December 18. If our current period changes, then we'll be able to, uh, the key in this case, so as we look at this, we'll see, now we've got a missing date in there, and that's strictly because we don't have a future year included in our time scale. So we just add the future year and apply this again. Now when we go back and view the 12th period, you'll see that we've got January 19 built in. So now that dynamic time is set up, you should be using it in each of your additional modules. So if we take a look at the constraints module, for example, we'll be able to see for each of these four line items, we're using months in the applies to. If you have any questions, please contact the Global Presales Operations Team.